Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we are going to look an alternative algorithm to divide fractions. So this is not the usual way to divide fractions as you see in school books. It's a different way, but some students might prefer it. And it goes like this. You change the fractions to be divided so that they have the same denominator, common denominator. And then you just divide the numerators. You can it, it becomes a whole number division. There's no more fractions. Let's look at an example. I have two fractions here, and we're going to divide. And my first step is to find a common denominator. And since there's 4 and 5 here, I chose 20 as my common denominator. And now we're going to write the fractions here using the principle of equivalent fractions. So 4 times 5 is 20, and therefore 3 times 5 goes here, 15. And here I have 5 times 4 here, so 2 times 4, or 8. And once I've gotten my fractions, so they have the same denominator, I forget the 20s, the denominators, and I just divide the numerators. 15 divided by 8. So the division problem has been changed into 15 divided by 8, but it will have the same answer as, as this one. And the answer to 15 divided by 8 is 15 divided by 8, or 15 over 8, right? Which is... 1 and 7 eighths. Okay, and let's look at another example. Here we have a mixed number. The only thing you need to do now is write it as a fraction first. And after that we go on as before. We find a common denominator. And for 3 and 9, 9 happens to work really well for a common denominator. So I will have 8 ninths here, and then this number will change 3 times 3 is 9, so 4 times 3 is 12. Okay? So my original division problem is now here. And now I just drop the over 9 over 9 and I just write the whole numbers from the top. 8 divided by 12 is my answer, which is 8 over 12. Okay? This one simplifies now because both are divisible by 4, so I get 2 thirds actually. Okay. If students want to know why all this works. It seems kind of like a simple idea. You can help them with this line of thinking. Remember that division can be thought of or interpreted in this way. The answer to 15 divided by 8, it means how many times 8 fits into 15, or how many 8s are in 15. And this answer here shows that there's almost 2. This is close to 2, right? 8 fits into 15 almost two times, 1 7 eighths of times. So, let's think. My original problem here, this one here, 15 twentieths divided by 8 twentieths. 8 twentieths here fits into 15 twentieths as many times as 8 bananas would fit into 15 bananas, or as many times as 8 hundreds would fit into 15 hundreds, or anything else. Basically, you could change this 20 to something like 15 thirds divided by 8 thirds. It would have the same answer as 15 twentieths divided by 8 twentieths. Or the same answer as 15 divided by 8. Because 8 fits, 8 fits into 15 as many times as 8 some kind of parts fits into 15 the same kind of parts. But if this is not enough, I will also prove it to you here using algebra in a moment. Before that, let's solve one fraction division problem using the usual way and this new way. And compare. Here's a division problem. Let's solve it the normal way, where the division is changed into multiplication and we will use the reciprocal of this. So, 5 sixths and times, and then we'll flip this one, 8 over 3. Okay, now here I have 6 and 8, so before I multiply, I can simplify. Okay, both are divisible by 2, so I get 3 here, and 4 here, and I get 5 times 4 is 20, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, this is 2, and 2 nines, right? And now, with the new method, we first need to find a common denominator. 6 and 8, okay. I know 24, 24 will work. 
And so I have 6 times 4 is 24, 5 times 4 is 20. And then 8 times 3 here, so 3 times 3, 9. Now I drop these denominators and my problem is this 20 divided by 9, right? 20 divided by 9. I will write it immediately here in this form, 20 divided by 9, this way. Well, we already see, okay, it's going to be the same as here. So 2 and 2 ninths. Now comparing, which one was more work or, or easier, you know, or more difficult? In my mind, this is definitely quicker and easier because you don't have to find a common denominator and change the fractions. That process always takes some thinking and some work. Okay, so I think this is quicker and easier in that sense. However, this is also easier to forget how it was done, right? Students often forget and they get mixed up and they start thinking, well, what did I do? Did I divide this, multiply that, or flip something, you know? They forget. So, the one advantage of this method is that it might be remembered easier. It is very similar to fraction addition, you know? So, the choice is yours, of course. And here's the proof now that it actually works. We have two fractions that we're dividing. A over B is the first fraction, and then C over D is the other. Of course, A, B, C, D are now here whole numbers, right? And we first find a common denominator. And uh, since we don't know anything about B and D, we're just going to choose B times D as the common denominator. That is surely a common multiple of B and D. Okay, it will always work. And there are the numerators. Okay, B got multiplied by D. So A has to get multiplied by D too. We get AD here. And here D got multiplied by B when we come here. So C that gets multiplied by B too. CB. Okay? If you can't follow this, don't worry about it. It really is only if you have studied algebra and onward that, that this is applicable, that you could follow it easily. In the next step, we're going to use the normal rule for fraction division, which is that this changes into multiplication. Okay, and then this is flipped. There's BD over CB. And now, something here gets simplified. BD here, BD here, they cancel each other. And so all we have left is AD divided by CB. Or I can write it this way, AD divided by CB. Okay? And that is exactly what I had in this step in the numerators. AD here divided by CB, okay? Those are the numerators. So, from here, I could go directly to here. Okay, take AD and then divide that by CB. And there are the numerators here, if you first wrote the fractions using a common denominator. Okay, so this proof can help maybe some students to get convinced that this method really works and convince you too. <laughs>